first, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. We appreciate you joining us. On this segment, we are going to be talking about a new study from OHSU. This study shows that a compound from a dahlia flower, when they essentially grind it down to its chemical components, has been found to be helpful in battling MS and some cancers. We go into much more detail with this by having one of the authors of this article, of this study, uh, Dr. Uh, Larry Sherman, who joins us here to talk about this. And uh, the doctor goes into a lot of detail here right at the beginning of just where this study started from and how it got going, what some of these conclusions could mean, and where we can go with the future of this as they now found out this part of the study and continue on with their research. So here we go. Here's Dr. Larry Sherman. So this project started many years ago when uh, our lab and in collaboration with several other labs uh, discovered that this molecule uh, that you've probably heard of called hyaluronic acid uh, builds up in the brains of people with multiple sclerosis and following all sorts of other brain injuries uh, and brain diseases. And um, a, a graduate student in my lab, uh, her name was Marty Preston, discovered that um, an enzyme that actually breaks this hyaluronic acid down in the brain uh, generated products of hyaluronic acid that prevent remyelination and repair. And that's the most important thing for MS is getting uh, this myelin sheath, which covers nerve cells. Um, this is like, it's like a wire. It's like insulation on a wire. That's what gets broken down by the immune system in people with MS. And, God. Uh, Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. No, that I, that was just a really good analogy. So, so thinking about that. So, it's it's insulation over a wire that wears down, and then that's what's causing, essentially, yeah, so that, some of the so that causes everything to kind of fall apart. So, you, you think about our brains. We need to. We have this really high need for high speed communication between different parts of our brains when we do anything, right? Um, so, when that wire falls apart, then we uh, we lose that high speed communication, and everything becomes difficult. We have problems with movement. We have problems feeling with feeling things, sensing things. We have problems thinking even. Um, and so uh, that discovery led to the idea that we could maybe find a way to block this particular enzyme that we identified. And uh, we had a, a kind of an experimental drug that didn't really work as a drug because it's sort of toxic to cells that we reported on a couple of years ago uh, that really nicely does the job, but it could never be a drug because it's too toxic. And so um, about that time, I approached um, uh, Professor Angela Hoffman, who is a chemistry pr professor at the uh, University of Portland. She's also a nun, which, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah. Um, and her whole kind of focus over the years has been using natural products uh, from plants to find new types of medicines. And she asked me if I could like help her develop a little way to test for the presence of an inhibitor for this enzyme that her undergraduate students could use. And so they basically, they would find a plant, they would grind it up, and they would test to see if it would block this activity. And over the years, she's had a few examples where that worked, but um, most of them weren't that great. And then a few years ago, she came to me and like we had this like really nice selection of extracts that did the job really, really well. And uh, so my graduate student, Alec Peters, um, came to the, to the scene at this point and took these compounds and tested them first to really show that they had the activity we wanted um, and then to show that they actually affected cells. And this enzyme we were talking about, it's called hyaluronidase, and it's been implicated in all sorts of things, ranging from cancers, multiple different kinds of cancers, uh, to this, this, this application for multiple sclerosis. And what Alec was able to show is that in cells that make tumors, uh, and in the cells that should be uh, becoming new cells that make new myelin, this drug really did the job. So it, it blocked the growth of these uh, tumor cells and actually induced their, their death in some cases. Uh, and it also uh, promoted the ability of these cells that make new myelin to come into being. And that was really exciting. So that's, that's where we are today. Wow, I mean, that's really incredible that it's, it's, it's able to do this. And this was discovered through that. Um, just a couple of questions talking about you know, the, the specific flower, so it's a dahlia, if I, I believe that's correct, that uh, that was used for this. So when you're talking about 
using this flour and, and, and grinding it down. So you go through that process. How many different kinds of flowers were tried out before the Dahlia was discovered to be the one that maybe has the, oh, the great properties? Many dozens. And yeah. uh, for each flower, you know, there were multiple different um, uh, chemical compounds um, in each flower. So it was a matter of not only figuring out the right flower, but the right drug within the right flower. Um, and so this was over multiple years that students had been trying to find this. And we just, by a lot, by, by happenstance, this one student got assigned the Dahlia or chose the Dahlia. And, um, and that went, and from there, she was able to uh, produce the results that we have for this, this paper. Sounds like that combination of meticulous, relentless hard work and also, yeah, that luck of just hitting that right and word. And a great learning experience for the kids in the program because uh, Dr. Hoffman is, is just so good at uh, doing things to give students true laboratory experience. Um, and so even the kids who didn't find anything interesting got something out of this. I think that was really fun. And then, of course, our lab was able to take it from there and, and really turn it into a nice little story. So we feel that this particular compound that has all this activity, it also may not be ideal as a drug per se, but now we know the chemical structure of this really well, and we can really kind of run from there and make it into something that could hopefully become a drug one day soon. So I guess that was kind of, yeah, my question there of now that you found this compound, you're seeing what it's able to do. You can't make it necessarily a drug out of that, but those next steps of, you know, how long of a process would that be? And could this potentially be something this amazing that could turn into this that could stop, I mean, stop tumors. I mean, stop tumors, you know, help people with MS. Um, right. Could this potentially be that kind of drug that could really do that and stop tumors and, and help people with MS? So what I'm hoping is that people will see the paper that's just come out. Um, and um, especially in the my, my friends in the cancer field, we do a little bit of cancer biology in my lab, but not a lot. But I have a lot of colleagues who do, and we're going to offer this to them and see, hey, would you be willing to test this in your model uh, to see if it actually stops the tumor growth? Um, so that's going to be kind of a longer process, I think, because it, it, it's going to be a matter of testing it first in uh, in vitro models, you know, in, in petri dishes, just in cancer cells growing in petri dishes, and then testing to see if it actually stops tumor growth in an animal model of cancers. Um, for us, we kind of have a plug and play system now because we've already been testing these drugs for, for MS models. And in fact, um, we have a population of Japanese snow monkeys at the Oregon National Primate Research Center that just, we've had them here since the 60s. They are living in this outdoor corral. They're, they're, they're amazing animals. They're just beautiful animals. But in the 1980s, all of a sudden, some of these animals started developing a disease just spontaneously that looks a lot like MS in humans. And so our goal is to see if we could really treat these animals and get, have, give them a, an option for, for therapy. And that if it works in the monkeys, we have a great chance of taking it then to people. Wow, well, that's a really amazing discovery. And obviously, you know, gives, gives you a little bit of hope as far as something that could, that could treat these diseases that people have and, and these specific ones, you know, MS and tumors. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Well, uh, anything else that you think is really important for the public in general to know about this research that you've, that you've posted in this study? I think the most important thing to know is that this is a step. It's not, it's not a mm -hmm. final outcome. It's, it's, it's really just a step. So this, this drug recapitulates, does what another drug did that we also knew would not be good as a drug because of its toxicity. Um, so we know that, that we've, we've shown that this can work, that we can actually do actually promote repair uh, in MS, and we can, uh, you know, hopefully have these effects on tumor cells. Um, but we're not there yet. I don't think that this particular, I don't want people to go out and start eating dahlias, you know, so um, we really need to use the chemistry from this to make something that could be used as a viable drug down the line and then test that to see if that really does the job. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it's, we're able to see the effects that we see gives us a lot of hope that we're on the right path. Well, as you mentioned, hope, and this is a step. So this is this is a step toward wherever this is going to take us and wherever that will take you with all of this study and, and your uh, your coworkers there. Well, thank you very much, Doctor, for, for joining us here. Uh, you know, to yeah. talk about this. Congratulations on this, and um, you know, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Yeah, we're we're all rooting for this. I appreciate it. Thank you so much.
All right, so yeah, very interesting development there from OHSU. And we've covered a number of their studies as they come out. We'll bring those to you here on Fox 12 now. And usually we're able to get some of the scientists and doctors and researchers that are behind those studies. So there's more of those for you to look at on the Fox 12 Oregon YouTube channel or at kptv.com under the Fox 12 Now tab or, of course, at uh, 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 on our Fox 12 Oregon app. So all great places to find it, to share this content, and you can leave comments there on YouTube as well. And if you have a suggestion for a topic or something that you would like to see here on the show, feel free to send me an email, fox12now at kptv.com. That's fox12now at kptv.com. And we'll see if we can do something with that and uh, maybe cover what it is that you want to see more of. That's it for right now. I'll talk